So we are here for the new Epic Plus SDG Challenge closing day. And today we, we are going to have uh, the presentations of each team uh, who worked yesterday on the proposals and in the new insights for the proposals. Uh, so that's it. Uh, this is a very brief introduction and we will already start with all the presentations direct. We're going to be straight. So uh, we're going to do it by uh, in the order of our Trello rooms. So room one will be the first and room nine, of course, the last one. So we should start with the mobile education uh, group, which is from Isabel and Julia. Isabel, are you there? Of course, I, I can see you. Your microphone is active. Yes, I'm here. And Julia is right there. Um, how we should we share our screen? Yes, you can. You can share. Uh, who who is going to be sharing? Julia or Isabel? Can you do it, Bell? Yeah, I can. I can share. So, so Isabel, you have the power now to present your screen, Bell, and that's it. Um, okay, um, ah, okay. Uh, okay, here. So, hi guys. Um, I guess we are presenting our insights templates. So, everything that we developed um, created created for the next semester so the project can continue. Uh, this is our mobile education insights document and yesterday we were uh, talking with uh, some teachers, um, PC, Paulo Celso, Jomelo, Simone, um, the Danish girls of our group, they were able to come to the meeting too, and some uh, group gestão members too. So, and Halby, we talked about uh, some some key quick key questions that we would like to answer for the next semesters and as the project project continues. Uh, for those who are not um, that familiarized, like for those that don't know a lot about our project, mobile education. Uh, this project project is about bringing financial and education for Brazilian way speakers. And um, we are, we created a prototype, like our group created a prototype in the beginning of this year of an app that would help uh, the way speakers to manage their finances and we planned to add uh, in the next semester some gamification in the app so uh, the Banco Central would like be a stakeholder in this process and about the questions that we thought about to answer in the next projects will be how could we find a private budget for rewarding the way speakers progress in the gamification so the gamification of the app would have this virt virtual coin and as long as the user do its chores monthly they would get these coins that later in the end of the month they could buy wow. a bell could you could you just uh, zoom in a little bit just so Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I was thinking about maybe I was talking too much. Okay, but uh, in this whole project, we will need um, some computer science students, design students, uh, product engineering students. So the computer science would be the responsible for uh, creating the new version of that because we have some requirements to this. Uh, to start building the new version of the app 
so it's not in this document but here we have a image about what will be the requirements that we need to have for the next like projects okay i'm having okay done so we would have to have uh, a gamification in the in the app we would have to include the way speakers family so not just the way speakers but their children could be uh, part of the app too so they can like play and stuff we would have to find stakeholders we would have to also add some courses financial management courses in the app and about the insights that we have uh, those were pretty interesting it's that uh, in two years 200,000 way speakers uh, might start working at SLU so we have this big opportunity to pop popularize the app Julia you want to say something I think I'm talking too much <laughs> no ju just I would just want to say that it was really interesting to see all different kinds of point of view on our project because um, most of the people that we were working on was Professor John Mello, Professor Simone and Halby. And it was really interesting to see what the other people thought about the project. We had some pretty interesting insights, I think, right now. And it was really, I'm really excited for the future, for the next semester. I think we have a, a great project here. And we have a lot of people involved, and I, I think it's going to to we are going to develop something really useful, you know. So I'm really excited, and I think it was it was great. And as as Bell was saying, in the future uh, here in Brazil, we're going to have a lot of way speakers that will not be able to to work on them sites anymore. So we need to to really help them in this new reality they are, that they are going to face. They, they only have two years to, to close the dump sites. If I'm wrong, please correct me someone. <laughs> but it's really important yeah. and it's a, a really urgent matter. So we are really glad to be part of the, of the project. I believe we have already talked for five minutes. I don't know if you have something to add, Bell. Yeah, I think it's just it. Like, if someone have any questions, you can ask. That's it exactly. This is a space for 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 questions right now. So, if we have uh, any questions, uh, that's the moment. I'll be. Can I talk? Yeah, of course, Mister. Just, just uh, it's a wonderful project, but just to correct, uh, uh, Isabel, uh, 200,000 people uh, with speakers in Brazil, not in SLU, because SLU is, is just in Brasilia. Yeah. Just a correction, because SLU is an institution of Brasilia, and the 200,000 way speakers will be uh, working all, all over the country. So, but it's a wonderful project. I'm very excited with Thank it. You, yeah, 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 perfect. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah, uh, Bell just. Oh, okay, okay. It's mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah, yeah, because we have two hundred thousand uh, way speakers in Brazil. Because we have three uh, three thousand uh, three thousand dump sites is still to be closed. That's it. So, any more questions about this? Uh, yeah, we would have Professor Marcia or somebody, someone else. Yep, Julia, is Isabel, any more comments? Um, I guess no, Halby. If someone has something to say, maybe um, people that are interested in the project can talk to us later, so we can like explain a little more. Exactly, exactly. We're gonna, we're gonna have like uh, some uh, surveys uh, for people to demonstrate interest to continue uh, um, any of the projects, even if they participated in uh, another room. So that's really good. Uh, I, I think yeah. Elizabeth uh, it's, uh, wants to say something that's really cool. 
Uh, I'm just wondering, um, these waste pickers, after the dump site will be closed, will they stand without work then, or is there any new work for them? Um, I didn't get that. So here uh, in Brasilia, <clears throat> when the dump site was closed, and they they did something. They they thought about it and they opened recycling cooperatives. So the waste speakers had the option to go work there. But we don't know if in the other cases they will do that. <clears throat> like Brazil was a, a success successful case in this in this scenario. But we are we can't say if the others will do it because we have a law and the correct me if I'm wrong, someone, but the law says that they need to close the dump sites in two years. So they they need to choose any strategy to do it, but we, we don't know if all of them will will have recycling cooperatives. I don't think I don't think so personally. Judy, you, you are right. Judy, you were right. But uh, Elizabeth, uh, uh, each city can can choose it, its own strategy. So we cannot say every city will work in the same way. But uh, with this project, we can uh, make some efforts. They can work in this way that to to include the the waste pickers in the the solid waste management system of of the city and the public service. Okay. I just wonder because, um, like here in Norway, we have this uh, waste uh, before we have one dump and everything went there. Um, now we have like, um, uh, we can go to the dump, but it's not the dump anymore. You have to sort it if it's wood, if it's metal, if it's just the leftover trash. Everything has to be sorted. I think it's about 20 containers you have to sort it in if you come and uh, going to throw something and uh, paintings and other dangerous goods a lot of things is dangerous goods ha has to be delivered somewhere else and the fabric has to deliver uh, dangerous goods to other businesses that's handling that and uh, there is people trained for sorting this kind of dangerous uh, material like painting and spray boxes and you know, a lot of chemicals. And that's a law in Norway. We are not allowed to dump anything. So I guess that's the same way it will go in Brazil too. So uh, I think the, it would be uh, nice if you can use uh, um, some of um, waste pickers to train them to, you know, really sort the waste because i think that will be very important uh, to yes. avoid pollution that's the idea elizabeth to to train them so they can be, be uh, uh, in a sorting position uh, not not a, like a waste speaker in a dump but in, in an installation working like a, any worker with uh, decent uh, conditions for sorting the materials for recycling, like plastic and uh, glass and metals, th that's the idea. But it will be uh, a project for each city. Uh, the, the solid waste management systems in Brazil, they are on responsibility of, of the city, of the municipality. So uh, we are going to, we are making efforts in the federal government to help them and to give them some support. But uh, the strategy and the project will be for each city, each one can can choose a better way. But uh, the inclusion of waste pickers is part of the the law, the, the federal law, and is part of our strategy. Uh, I just have one question then. Is the um, municipality, the region, uh, responsible to handle its, its own waste or is it private? Uh, like in Italy, it's like a lot of corruption, so uh, waste is going the wrong places anyway. How is it in Brazil? We have a, 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 a complex system here, but uh, it's it's a, a public uh, responsibility. Uh, the, the the solid waste from the the, the houses, the household, but the, the other waste, the, the private waste from the restaurants and the the markets, it's it's private. 
so they have to to give a, a private solution but the, the public waste uh, each municipality has his own contract its own contracts to to clean the city that's why we have to make a project each city can make a different project but we are we're giving them guidelines so they can make you similar projects we cannot Oh, it's not uh, an obligation, but the law, the federal law, uh, uh, gives that that, get, get, that that guidelines, and we're making guidelines, technical guidelines, to help them. But uh, we can we can follow in the next two years, like Isabel said, they must close the, the dumps. So the, the two hundred thousand uh, waste pickers are working in dump sites now. We have more than one million waste pickers in Brazil working in uh, facilities, in recycling facilities. So that's the idea: they include them in recycling facilities. But it's not a, it's not a easy work. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Yeah. Uh, just a comment, Professor Melo. Uh, yes, regarding the new law that we have in Brazil, was just approved the last month. It's been less than a month old. So uh, we are going to have private enterprises being part of this collecting. We already have this position, this condition, but most of the companies are state or are municipal companies. And the, the new law says that they may be uh, private companies to do this. So it is going to be a, a real nice work to do, to, to see the whole thing. OK, so in our account with what you are doing in Norway to to help us in 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 in, in seam solutions in a develop in a developed country? Okay. Thank you for your uh, your uh, participation. Perfect, perfect. That's a uh, real uh, really interesting discussion. Daniel Gritze uh, just said in the in the chat that he will be helping with requirements later, which is really good. Uh, and also. Yeah, I'll give it, I'll give this space very quickly to Leonardo Virgil, Virginio, who wants to make a question. Uh, hello, I was thinking uh, waste pickers are really poor people, and most of all doesn't have even a cell phone or kind of internet access. Uh, I was thinking uh, uh, internet point in the in the cooperative or the the place the way speakers go to uh, to work after the dump closures would be uh, even better than try to to make uh, internet for each way speakers because uh, what do you think because it's very hard to to give internet connection to everyone in a in a place like uh, structural in in Brazil in Brazil. Oh, Leonardo, that's a very interesting point. Very interesting point that you brought. And, I, uh, and Daniel Brits is already answering this on the chat. So uh, you probably could even uh, uh, go through this discussion in the chat because uh, uh, there is, they have a plan for it. So if you want to, Daniel Brits is on the chat, and I think this question is really important. Thank you. Leonardo, just, just to, to make yourself uh, be in peaceful, like they all, most of them have WhatsApp. So like we know that they don't have a lot of access to, in, to internet and stuff, but they most of them have WhatsApp, so like they have some kind of smartphone and this kind of stuff. But that's something that we are worrying about. All right. Thank you very much, Leonardo. Uh, so yes, maybe uh, maybe one one comment from me as well. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. Because, because, because like one of the questions, for example, for example, the questions relating to do the waste pickers have internet access, and how do we handle the situation that they don't have access always? These questions. Uh, I think we're already addressed in some of the previous projects. So I think it is important that we find a way so we don't have to start from scratch every time, but that we collect the information from the previous projects so we can stand on top of that. Yeah. I think, uh, Matthias Ismail, I think you are working in some very windy place. 
Oh, oh, this this wind is, is mine. I, I thought it was somebody. No, it's not yours. Okay. Okay, I'm I'm going to try to find uh, who is the windy <laughs> person. Okay, but 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 I think fi finding a way to to uh, record the previous experience, and maybe having a short overview of the products that have been done already, and the main finding and the main results, so that we don't reinvent the wheel every time we start doing a project again. I think is it's important to find a way of doing this. You you see. Uh, Jens, in terms of this uh, Wi-Fi and, 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 and facilities in the internet, a few years ago, in, we had a project here, I think Patron, uh, one of the, the guys that is in the meeting now, was in this project, was to transform the pay phones in Brazil in internet, in public internet points. But this is, uh, it was not done in Brazil, okay? But this would be... A, a good place to do this, but uh, anyway, it is something that we have done in some project last like semesters. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, that discussion. I think the girls are aware what Yen said is really important. Uh, of course, the connection uh, in the history uh, of the project and the girls uh, they they brought a, a lot of things with the. Uh, from the uh, Robert report and also which is the uh, Daniel Britz's report as well. So uh, it is a really important point. And I think in this case, they are uh, they are doing well in for, for this aspect. So uh, that's really good. And yep, that's it. Any more quick comments? Because this project is like four in one. So it's natural to have uh, like a discussion like this. But any more comments? on the mobile education.